Welcome to the Global Center for Christ Consciousness. We have Ananda Das joining us today. Good morning, everybody. Ah, it's nice to be here. We're just going to sing a really ancient chant from the yoga tradition. It's called the, well, more commonly known as Asatoma. So say this after me. Maybe you know it. Asatoma. Satgamaya. Tamasoma. Jyotir. Gamaya. This is the hard one. Mrityorma. Amritam. So it's not going to be the easiest, but then we'll do the English part, <laughs> and the English part we'll do call and response. We'll get everybody singing, okay? Everyone, 
centering for our opening prayer. Feel the music because it's part of the opening prayer. The intention, the words, the joining together in singing, humming the song. Still here. Glory, glory, glory. The angels sing that the children of God are joining again to remember their true identity. Being the Christ as God created us to be. Not individual Christs, but the Christ. Joined together in knowingness, in love, in acceptance of one another. Not the acceptance of foul behaviors and words, the acceptance that beyond the human egoic behavior is the light of God. So we see ahead of time the peeling away of all of this in each of us and in us globally, that egoic self making room for God, making room for the Divine Mother to birth in us the love, the brilliance that we are, birthing the Christ, Reminding us who we are and how to be and live as such in ourselves and in our ability to see each other. That concept of namaste, that concept of the glory, the God in me honors the God in you. And the good news is that there is nothing else. But the bad news is that for now it seems like it. So for our mistaken behaviors, once called sins, For our mistaken behaviors, I affirm now and we affirm collectively that we already forgive each other and ourselves. Therefore, we're already home, and that's why the angels sing. And so it is. Please join me in reading our mission statement, which you can find. Today's mission statement and um, sacred reading apparently is going to be accompanied. Music. Uh, Music. Music. (laughs) Do I say it? Together we say, the Global Center for Christ Consciousness is a spiritual center for students and masters on the spiritual path, we are dedicated to awakening the inner Christ and to creating a world of love, peace, joy, and abundance. And now for our sacred reading. From A Course in Miracles, surrounding us is all the life that God created it in His love. It calls to us in every heartbeat and in every breath, in every action and in every thought. Peace fills our heart and floods our body with the purpose of forgiveness. Now our mind is healed and all we need to save the world is given us. Each heartbeat brings us peace. Each breath infuses us with strength. We are messengers of God, directed by His voice, sustained by Him in love, and held forever quiet and at peace within His loving arms. Each heartbeat calls His name, and everyone is answered by His voice, assuring us that we are at home in Him. And so it is. Once again, we welcome Ananda Das. Seem a 
uncertainty, clarity, unity, where will we be? Decisions that could change so much of this life as it was. chapter is born pages yet to be seen my breaths grow deeper these days love and gratitude are all that stays yeah the season of change yeah is deep within my soul the winds carry me forth to this place I've known long before within me and oh a new day will come shining like the brilliant sun yeah. so many friends have come so many friends have gone so many still yet to come Smiles and the tears that shed the tapestry of this web of the lives I've lived before and the lives I'm soon to live well. Who am I now and who will I become? Yeah, oh, there's so much to this life I'm grateful for all I've learned and surrounds me and oh spirits within me and oh a new day will come shining like the brilliant sun yeah. and I won't be of what's soon to be just accept what lies ahead and all its beauty well hearts may break things will change the lives we lived will never be the same and that's okay and that's okay that's okay, and that's okay, and that's okay, and it's okay, and it's okay, and it's okay. to this life I'm grateful for all I've learned and oh spirit surrounds me and oh spirits within me and oh a new day will come shining like the brilliant sun yet yeah. who am I now and who will I become yeah oh there's so much to this life I'm grateful for all I've learned and oh spirit surrounds me and oh spirits within me and oh a new day will come shining like the brilliant sun yeah.
Amazing. Those of you who are guests, my name is Michael Mirdad, and I serve here as part of the spiritual leadership. Thank you for joining us. We hope you return often. Our room is filled with people, so thank you for blessing us with so many folks present and online. Thank you, folks online as well. Are there any topics you would like me to cover today? Speaking of which, divine, divine what? Providence. That's interesting. Despair, faith, and love. Face fear? Despair. Despair. Well, Tommy, I only store it. <laughs> That's an abstract one, huh? Surrender. Surrender. Anything else? Trusting the process. Trusting process. That's good. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Yeah, your songs, you know, get them in my mind. And it's like, <laughs> what are we going to talk about today? You know, I just, that's in my mind. So it's like, every word from here is going to have lots of melody, but no fear. Oh. <laughs> The variety of requests are diverse as usual, and that's wonderful. You know, to bring up trauma, mental illness, um, despair, I mean, those are some of the, the heavy words, you know, and then there's trusting process and, and even physical healing. There, the, most of the words, if you look, the theme is challenges, right? Most of them. Uh, you know, and in this world, we're told you're going to have challenges. You're not going to be without them because it's a fallen world. If we were to be without challenges, we would actually think this is our home, and it is not. So in a way, yes, evil, the ego, causes harm and trauma to mankind, but in a way, we subconsciously are open to it so that we don't tempt ourselves to get too comfortable here. Yogananda's words, this is not your home. You know, this is not our home, so don't get too comfortable. So, which is challenging because then we're, we're living on this edge of, you know, like thinking, well, you know, life, the, the great thing about life, what we can do is get life to feel better. There's people that do positive thinking with the goal, this is, Tinny, can you work on that? Um, you know, with the goal of, of, oh, as long as bills are paid and everything's fine, that's actually not your purpose. Your purpose is to be the presence of peace. And that includes during challenging times. Yeah, right? Remember, two important pieces. One, ah. <sighs> God be with me wherever I go. We're thinking, hey, I, I went to this workshop and we learned how to get all the right answers. There are none. This isn't even real. How can you get a right answer in an illusion? They're all wrong. Which car should I buy, Lord? Like God's going, Volvo, go for the Volvo. <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. No, I've read in consumer, whatever they call that, you know, consumer something reports, reports that, that, you know, that God likes Volvos. No, <laughs> because it's better safety. Or that God wants you to get a blue car instead of a red car, because red car is so root chakra. It doesn't, that's not how this works. <laughs> you know, that's not at all how this works. We're supposed to learn to say, God be with me wherever I go. Okay, that's it. I know it feels good to think that God told you which car. That would involve God having an opinion, which God does not have. God is the truth and the presence of bliss, not opinions. God doesn't favor this versus that or in any form, in any form. So our job is to say, I get it. God, I used to think... There's a part of us that thinks there's no God. Then we start to believe in God. Then we gradually start to, well, I want more God, so I want God to guide me, which is right to do. Don't get me wrong. That's right to do. 
But the high, even higher than that is, and wherever I go, you're with me. Door number one or door number two? Be with me. Now, when you do that, first of all, all of heaven's like, like there's this ripple, this wave of just celebration because a child of God has affirmed God's presence where they are, which means you're now blessing and making sacred wherever you're standing. Okay, boom. So that's happening, like this phenomenal, like this, this shockwave of miracle consciousness. Now, th that's cool. Wherever I, I go, God is with me. Wherever I am, God is, right? So on. So this is perfect. Now, even if you picked the inferior car, structurally inferior, if God goes with you, it's going to become a better car. And or someone will give you the, another one that's even better because your consciousness is in the right place. It doesn't mean that that was the right car or the wrong car. It's the it doesn't matter car because you're plugged in. Seek first the kingdom. So like, wow, I get it. Now, now that doesn't mean there's still not going to be. But what if you're going to have that? Because we're crazy humans. And the human condition with an ego, the ego doesn't just go, oh, well, now that you're asking God's guidance, fine, I'll just sit back here and wait until I'm hired again. It just still rushes in. Any car, any choice, any to date, not date is in God's hands, you know, and, and God show me which person to date or whatever your technique would be to ask which one or to go with God, either one. The ego doesn't give up. Even with you walking in with a state of grace, the ego's watching for where to mess with you. It's going to look at, I know all of your history. I remember when you bought a chariot 1,500 years ago where you weren't sure if you should get the one with radial tires. I remember that, and you were so mad at yourself because you went to war, and the tires fell apart, and you had the reins of the horses. They were dragging you through the battle, both sides of the militaries were laughing. Look at this. They must have bought the non-radial tire chariot. So the ego will bring that up. And now you're going to go, I don't know why, but in the middle of the night, radial tires popped into my head. I should have got the other car. And it's still going to get you. So first go in, God with me, wherever I go. But the second is, if and when the other stuff pops up, your job, it's the only other job you have. The God part, invite God in. The second part, the Christ part, which is to forgive yourself. Help me to forgive my doubts. Help me to forgive any lifetimes, including this or future life, where I might have gotten the wrong tires or doubted myself. Bring it all in. The God part is your job. Bring it in. But you're going to still have doubts. When you do, practice forgiveness, which restores you back to the God you brought in. Well, once I do that, am I good to go? It, I don't know. You still might have it come up again 10 more times today. Forgive yourself for doubting that the forgiveness worked. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, just back to the work, back to the work. Back, and that's your job. That's how to make this heaven on earth. It will not happen by just some, some structural way of doing it or political way of doing it. It's by us learning to live in the light of God. You know, a, a woman once interacts with Jesus. She meets him at a well. There's more than one story of this happening. It happened more than once. But, um, you know, Jesus approaches a well and this woman meets him and, and she's going into all the doubts and stuff. Where does that come from? Well, you could say the ego, yes. But also the ego that programs us with guilt and shame about our past. I mean, you can act all goddessy and pretend you don't have any wounds. We are hurting. We are all hurting. Until the day we we're totally in the remembrance of God, we're going to hurt. Why? You know, I've said this the other day in a program. Some of you haven't even gotten over a cat that died 10 years ago. Try to imagine what it feels like to miss God. Not just a cat. God. Multiply it, uh, the cat, by a trillion, and you're still nowhere close. We all feel that. When you see somebody struggling, starving, 
living dangerously. We all feel that. But that pain is not just sympathy for a person. It's us all wishing we were home because then they wouldn't have their struggle. They wouldn't be in such pain. So we know home is the answer. So this, you know, this, this woman, you know, she's carrying guilt and shame, whether it's because she was, it was because of her race. It's not just skin color. Even then, there was the race thing going on. So one race wasn't allowed to even speak to another race. And Jesus is talking to her, and she's like, what are you, why are you talking to me? Your, your race isn't allowed to speak to my race. And you know what he's saying is, but I don't agree with that. So now she's confused. But is she confused just because of the differing policies, you know, politics? No. She was confused because she's standing in the presence of Christ, which is the divine in you and me. And she's starting to feel that. Something's different about this guy. So she's actually challenging him. Consciously, she's challenging him as a bitter woman who's been used and abused by people and men and politics and whatever. So she's frustrated. She's hurt. My race has never been accepted. She's hurting. My culture's never been accepted. She's hurting. And the only acceptance I get is a few minutes of being used. So now she carries the hurt of that, which then becomes an anger of that. And, and now she's talking to somebody who doesn't buy those rules. And now she's actually, it's interesting, she is trying to get him to conform to the things that hurt her. <laughs> is that sane? No. But it's what we do. I'm not used to people being nice. I'm not used to unconditional love. So they push you and test you to get you to get triggered so they can go, oh, there you are. Typical man now is coming out. Typical, there's race, skin color, or whatever it happens to be. So sad to me that we, that we would try to burn goodness to make sure that there's gold in there somewhere. To try to melt someone's kindness, you know, away so that we can prove there was nothing there that was substantial. It was just a wax candle. It's very sad that we would push people to that extent and to pretend that we don't have hurt. So she's kind of, you know, fighting him on this. And he's like, I don't, that's not me. And you know what's interesting about this, besides everything else? This is the, the, the beginning of Jesus' local ministry. He traveled the world throughout his teens and 20s. He traveled the world. He, he did. He performed miracles. He did all kinds of wonderful things. But his main, his first announcement of who he really was, I am an embodiment of the Christ, was not made in a synagogue or church, was not made to elders or even his apostles. It was to a woman that was not even the right race and coloring and culture. It's, I think that's brilliant. Let me single out someone who is the lowest caste on, in the region and let her know I'm the Christ. Isn't that cool? And she's like, uh, why are you telling me this? You know, like this is a little weird. And he's like, because I trust you. I'm going to show you love, unique love that I can't even show my apostles or anybody else yet. Why? Because you can relate. What do you mean I can relate? I'm just a Samaritan or whatever title. It doesn't matter. You're in pain and I'm addressing your pain because behind your pain is a love for God and I'm God. So I know what you're really looking for. I mean, he's talking to her at levels and wavelengths that the human brain can't comprehend. It's a woman that first sees him when he resurrects. It's a woman he first announces that he's the Christ. There's reasons for that. And I'm not saying women are better than men. They're just nicer. <laughs> Sorry. No offense, guys. Energetically speaking, a man is a little more cerebral and a little more left brain, which involves, good. it's good, it's good. It's a thinker and so on. But it also is the brain that thinks I already know everything that I need to know. It doesn't address or allow the right brain that goes, oh, there's so much more. No, there isn't. We only need to know that. Yeah, but what about, no. And that's church, you know, religion versus spirituality. It's also politics versus spirituality. It's everything in the linear world, academics. It's all that thinking stuff, which is really lame. But behind it, it's they're afraid that they're missing God. The person that hides behind politics, the person that hides behind intellectualisms, 
all, it's just a longing for God and they don't know how to find God. So they have to create some pseudo system of God. That's all it is. We, people in a program like this, you know, it's very obvious. We're the Gnostics of the past. We're the ones that were into spirituality and metaphysics before. You wouldn't be drawn to some, most people wouldn't be drawn to something, this kind of a group, if we hadn't done something like this before. Some of us, it's a little new and it's intriguing. Yes, it's true. Maybe, maybe 10, 20% it's new. We don't have a history of these kinds of profound levels of teaching, let's call it. You know, but... But you feel a resonance. You feel something really powerful. This isn't a lecture-oriented place. This is experiential. This is us remembering who we are. I mean, that's the whole plan. Two things you're here to remember. Two things you're mainly here to do. God first, and you being the Christ second. And then we're home. Because that's the Trinity. I only named two things, but it's the Trinity. Because the Father aspect of God holds space as heaven. The Mother aspect comes here to work with us and help us grow and birth us home. The Christ that gets birth is the child, the Son of God. Not male son, but the child of God. So our remembrance is like prioritizing. It's all about remembering God and then living it, which is called Christ on earth. Remembering God and then living it. The word Christian means to be Christ-like. And if you go into a Christian church and say, they say, what are you about? I'm all about being the Christ. Do you actually understand? They'll crucify you. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You know, and as they're nailing through your wrists, you know, you could be going, I don't understand. The word Christian means to be Christ-like. <gasps> you know, how dare you think that you can be Christ-like? So sad. When this angry woman was saying to Jesus, but, you know, where is I? Where's God? Why was I born into this group? Why am I a woman on the run? Why am I outcast? Anything. Why am I an addict? Anything you've struggled with. You're the woman at the well. And Jesus says, yes, I understand all those things. But where's God? He doesn't say a building and a synagogue and a this and a that. He says it's in your heart and soul. Wait, what? Yeah, see, the masculine side of us wants to promote it can only be found in a church which follows rules. The church used to say the only way a person can ever experience God, and not experience here, but just be in the presence, is you go to a church and the bishops have to be present giving communion or it's not real communion. If the, in other words, there has to be certain people there to make it real. It's like, wow. So there's an ecclesiastic kind of structure. The Gnostics that lived at that time that ended up being persecuted and many killed because they were living the Christ life. They were saying, no. Anybody who's right in their heart is the presence. And that was considered her heresy. So here this woman is being told, it's, it's in your heart and soul. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. So when you bring up words like despair and hurt, and I, I love that. It is our destiny. It's providence. It's our destiny to remember. But to pretend we don't have hurt is actually pain speaking. I need to, I'm so fed up with hurting that I have to get involved with a group where we say, we don't have any issues left. <laughs> see? And I, I, I feel for you. I understand it. I see exactly what you're doing. Now, they'll think I'm nuts. They won't agree with me. But that, too, is a cry for love. I'm very sorry that you're hurting so much you have to pretend you're not. So it's that honesty. When you, when you say... You know, where are you, God? You know, and, and, and try to create pseudo versions of God, whether it's a building or whatever else. That's really sad, but it, but it does show how badly you want God. And I like that. Just see the, what the message behind the behavior, and it's a search for God. But it's clearly misdirected. Um, our center is an external place, but we never tell anybody it's the grounds. This used to be an ancient Native American spiritual center and, you know, we, or some druidic thing or it was a pagan cultural thing. Uh, you know, we don't do that. 
I, I don't care. You can, we can build a center over a former recycle plant. And it's the consciousness that changes it into a sacred site. It isn't the building, but yeah, we decorate it and make it look beautiful. It isn't the grounds, but we decorate it and make it look beautiful. Because that's respecting the illusion. But we never tell you, you're lucky to even be on this property, man. <laughs> you just don't get it, man. You know, this place is magical. I've never been the type. I've never been so delusional. I, I honestly, your heart and soul is the most sacred place, period. Get two or more people joining hearts and souls, intentions and such. Now something magical starts to happen. Do it consistently and you're creating a sacred space. Why? Because you're anchoring that presence. The more dramatic an emotion, the more presence it leaves. An etheric kind of a memory. Which is why dramatic battlegrounds like infamous Gettysburg is so haunted. Well, the Native Americans said, no, I was haunted before you people killed each other. <laughs> they did. They said that was already a strange place because it was very vortex-ish, meaning it was very susceptible to energy and astral energy and so on. Going there and killing each other in that place just intensified it. But the, the hate, the killing, it left an energy. House, just a house. You asked about mental illness. Just a house with enough rage or mental illness, instability, depression, can leave an impression in that home. We know that, right? But so true, it's so, it's so too does it happen with love, peace, joy, oneness, celebration. And it has to start somewhere. It's, okay, this center. But if we keep telling you, you know, that, that no place else other than here, it, it, would, it creates codependence. No place on earth is heavenly except here. What if you become disabled and are at home? Oh, poor thing. Now you can't experience God because you can't get to our center. No, what we're saying is you must learn how to take this from a Sunday or any event of ours and take it with you. Now, everywhere you go, everywhere you go you're actually tethering this energy, which is tethered to God energy, out to the world. You're like drawing that string out and pinning it. Drawing that string out, you're creating your own grid system. If you have the consciousness. It doesn't mean you go out and get with somebody at a cafe and gossip and it's like some beautiful light work, you know. No, you have to be responsible and show up. But we're doing amazing grid work. We're the light workers, the Gnostics, the early Christians. You know, the early Christians were not using crosses as their symbol. They used the Vesica Pisces shape, which is the one Jesus drew on the ground, the fish. That's the vesica Pisces. It's the shape of your third eye. It's the shape of the womb you come through when you're born, physically. But it's also the symbol up here, not the female womb. But here, it's the symbol of when you're birthed spiritually. You birth physically through it here. You birth spiritually through it here. That symbol. But why was Jesus drawing it on the ground? You know why? Because that was a place of hatred. They were stoning people, mostly women, for crimes. So he draws on the ground. Now we think he just drew on the ground. He was also anchoring consciousness on that site, ridding it from evil and bringing in miracles, which is, you, you know, people just have no idea how powerful that is. That means you could be walking down the street, buying an apple at the market, and suddenly, oh my God, you're having some transformational experience because you walked on that site and he left such power there. But if people don't know it, I don't know why, I just walked down that street and I don't know broke into tears and started praising God, you know? It's because you walked into a Christ kind of vortex. It's the same, it's, ironically, it's the same pagans drawing pentagrams on the ground. That star symbolizes Christ. Everybody goes, oh no, can't be Christ because it's the pagans. The symbol is of the Christ and the five elements. The earth, water, fire, and air is your human torso chakras, and that's the human you. But the fifth element, which is ether, is your upper three chakras, that's God. Vitruvian man, four limbs, and then in, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So that's the original symbol. But, you know, some of the pagans are going to go, no, no, it's just the four elements and five elements, and so it's earthy. Because they're so afraid of saying it's God. And what's really sad to me is there's, there's these people out there, you know, talking in terms of, of um, 
acting to be Christ, be, be Christians. But they don't even get along with each other, let alone other religions. It doesn't make sense, but they, they don't realize. Modern Christians are still acting like the Catholics that they condemn because they became such, you know, so clerical, so organized. I mean, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is Rome in Roman. Rome was an invading culture. It was a harsh culture. So it's just, you know, no offense to Catholics. It's the consciousness of the individuals. But the organization is kind of like mafia meets religion. It's, we're going to have hit men, and, you know, and they're going to judge you. And it, it, it is. It's, it's dark. But the Christians condemn them. But the Christians hate everybody except people at their own church. Go online and check out some of the most popular Christians. Listen to how much they criticize each other. You know, some of them are like Jesus and Jesus. And I'm like, yes, good job. I can go to a local Christian church or somewhere else in some other town. I love people loving Christ or Jesus or Mary or whatever they love. I don't mind. I'm, I'm okay with it. I love people bowing their forehead to the ground, praising Allah because they're putting their forehead to the ground and it's a symbol of my ego is being humbled. I love it. Anybody that is sincere about their journey with God, I love it. I cannot judge that. I can't say it's good or bad because it's east or west or up or down. That doesn't make sense. But people do. And then when you see them judging their own religions, and the, the funniest thing about it is Jesus warns, be aware of false prophets, false teachers, false religion. He's talking about the Christians and Christian traditions, including Christian meaning all, like Catholic and all of them. Because, he sa and he says in that prediction, they're going to say, here is Christ. And there is, you know, they're going to name it, but they're, they're lying to you. The more they have to put a structure to it, the less it's here. So if you go into, and I'm not condemning any particular, all of them are nuts. They're all, they're all religions and they're on a crazy planet. I'm not criticizing them. I'm saying they're a crazy organization in a crazy world. They're even, we could even say, I guess they're doing the best they can, given the asylum that they're living in. <laughs> the real Christians are, to, it means to be Christ-like. Are you trying to be Christ-like? If you're a Christian and you're spending more time, more, more like 90% of your lectures, you have to insert something about that's judgmental. That's interesting to me because if you read a red-lettered Bible, the actual words of Jesus, and then put them into a computer and tell the computer to do a, a, a survey to check out how often Jesus was ever harsh, it's like 1%. So why should you have a religion that's 99%? It doesn't make any sense. To be Christ-like means do that. And Jesus only spoke harshly about one group to one group. Hypocrites. That's all. That's all. I mean, he, he didn't. Well, you're, after all, you're a woman, you shouldn't be. And after all, you're that culture. He didn't do that. He would even bring things like that in his stories, his examples. The Good Samaritan. You can't be Jewish and say the Good Samaritan. They're bad people. No, they're not. Jesus was irritating people, man, all the time. That's all I can tell you. Just constantly irritating people. And, you know, okay, so what? Why? Because he's telling the truth. It's, it's very, you know, tempting for us to experience something as beautiful as this and then try to put a name and a, what is this? Well, Michael, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's kind of, Christians would say, I'm too liberal and Eastern, and they're wrong. But Easterners would say he's too Christian, and they're wrong. None of them have a clue because as soon as they try to put a label, they're wrong because I'm this, and there's no, like, I'm praising myself. I'm just a person trying to manage this kind of consciousness, which isn't easy in a body. You know, it's like I, you, I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, and then, oh, I forgot. I got to stand with feet and not with my elbows. You know, it's like, you know, everything's so abstract in the God consciousness. I got to remember, oh, that's right, feet, you know, and oh, that's right. I haven't eaten yet today. Or, you know, I have to remember to, you know, balance all of this. So I'm not claiming to have all that together. But what I have is, a sense of what feels right. 
and then living accordingly. But, uh, you know, it's never been about, it's always been about bridging and connecting everything. I said, you know, the, the first priority is God. Second is living the Christ life. Because if you connect with God, you're going to start living the Christ life. Because you feel so plugged in. You start to change. Buddha gave commandments. Moses gave commandments. But they're not actually believing you can handle all of those 24-7. You're going to slip. So Jesus comes in and says, not only for those who slip all the time, but even those of you who try to get it right, you're going to slip. I'm bringing you a message of the importance of forgiving yourself. Instead of trying to get it right. And then after enough lifetimes of trying to get it right, you might eventually get it right. Good for you. He's saying, no, that's going to take too long. Just sit still and forgive yourself for not getting it right, and now you got it right now. And then you slipped again, now you got it right right now. That's it. Perfect, man. Talk about shortcuts. Like, that's just fantastic. My role in part, and any of you who feel this is also your role, is really the first piece Let's talk about communion, communion with God, second piece, and how to live it. That's what I do. If someone's asking me advice in one area or another in their lives, or personal life, relationship, life, I just feel that that's my thing. It's, it's always about bridging God to mankind, mankind to each other. God, self, others, just creating this ecosystem. But I don't have a doctrine of it. There's no religion that we can make of it. That, that would just you know, make my skin crawl to try to make this into some ism of some kind. But people that don't understand it, when they see you living the Christ life, they're going to feel freaky about it. Who are you? You're just one of us in our 12-step group. Don't be too spiritual. Don't be too, don't hold too much presence and confidence. You're just one of us in this group of whatever other group you hang out with. And they're going to go, no, 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 chill, man, chill. You know, now, I remember being one place when I was a kid and these people were all getting drunk and they're laughing and are doing things. And I'm, I'm always just like, you know, like, you know, just this, I don't know, you know, thing. Why is eyes wide? I'm just like, wow, look at what humans do. And I just kind of observe. And they're all partying. And then there was this roar was, you know, somebody was like, ah, and then spilled his beer or whatever. And there's this roar of laughter. And these people were mostly a few years older than me. And there's this roar of laughter. And the person picks up the beer and turns and they see me. And I'm just... You know, and he just looks at me and goes, oh, never mind. Like, like, like looking at me like, almost like you're, you're an alien. Like, you know, we're all doing this and he, I wasn't doing anything. I didn't judge him. I didn't care. But he just looked at me and realized that person doesn't even fit into this. And you'll have that happen to yourself at times. Like, where do you fit in anymore? Go try out a family reunion. <laughs> you know, and you're just like, this feels foreign. Like, it just doesn't, you know, and people, uh, turn on the news, I want to see who's hating who again, you know, and you're like, can we not turn on the, and you're going to be tempted, and your first mistake is to try to make them change. Don't. Don't make it obvious that you get appalled by their behavior, you know. Why are you getting appalled? Look at it, you know, and just try to be the presence and blend in. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm saying stuff your knowledge, your feelings, but you don't have to push it on people either. It's a little another extreme. So churches are the false prophets, the far, false religions that Jesus warned us about. Yeah, they are. The ones that say, here is Christ, the look, we have it, you know? They're lying. And the reason they preach it so much is because they're so afraid of the fact that they don't have it. Jesus walked into the religions of the time all the countries he went to, they tried to kill him. They did. Because the priestly classes of those times felt a little inconvenience because Jesus was saying, it's here. And they were like, no, keep them dependent on us. Just because you teach the independence, that doesn't mean you don't have communion one with another. But it's done differently. There's an acceptance. There's a, a love and appreciation from one another. You know, you, you, there's a knowingness. Like, and you come here to celebrate it. Yes, to learn, because we're still here and we're learning and we're healing. True. But also to celebrate. It just feels good to be in this space. You are not putting this center to its fullest use if you don't take this with you when you leave. 
then you're still living the hypocrisy. I go there, I feel so great, and then I go home and I hate my family and I hate everybody and my neighbors play their music too loud and so on and so on. That's the human stuff and you're allowed to tell your neighbor, can you turn it down a little bit? You know, it's okay to, to take care of those things of life. It's just done with more love, more tact, and not with hate, not with reaction, not with fear. You're not living in your old programs. So, you know, I would just say that it's bridging all of this. Um, and people, they'll get it or they won't. Your job is to be the presence. This idea of we're children of God, or sometimes we'll say daughters of heaven. We are children of God. And what else would we be doing here than to remember that we're children of God? Why would we want to live in the suffering of not remembering? That doesn't make sense. Why don't we live in the celebration of remembering instead of the suffering of amnesia? Mental illness, yes, it's rampant on this planet, but everybody has it to some degree. The fact that you can think you're not with God right now in heaven, there's a part of us, every one of us, that's in heaven. But then there's another part that thinks it's here and embodying an ego and struggling. But part of us is still actually tapped in there. You know, it's interesting. It's kind of like having a vehicle. You're in it, but it's not running. It doesn't mean it doesn't run. You just have to know how to turn it on. I'm sitting in a car, but it's not doing anything. Accelerator, nothing. Shift gears, nothing. You have to turn it on. You have to activate the remembrance, but part of us is still safely tucked away in God, right? Right? We're still home. Why aren't we celebrating that? Well, because I don't remember. So all I know is the people that irritate me and make me remember that I'm not one with God. Start hanging out with people that remind you that you are and give thanks for those people. Then it's not over. Once you go, oh, I'm still one with God. That's cool. Put on your oxygen mask and say, God, I'm going in. And you go back to your day-to-day -day life with having remembered, go back, because that's to the work. And I don't just mean the work to help those fallen people. This is where you integrate it in you. Because it's still theory if you go, oh, it's so nice. It's like a person with a near-death experience. And I saw God, and I saw light, and I felt love, universal peace. It was great. And you come back, and you're still a jerk. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> what was the point of them sending you back? Oh, yeah, we wanted you to go back and be nothing like you were a minute ago when you were basking in God. They're asking you to go back and bring that presence. You have to do that from this place here. You got to bring this center, what you feel here, what you learn here, what you share here, and with each other, to the world. And the world does not, will not always respond favorably. Your presence, though, people, generally speaking, one way to know if you're really getting it is, in general, when people think of you and speak of you, do they think of you and speak of you as a nice person? Or do, they're like, do they like go, oh my God, I get an anxiety attack every time I think about them. You know, you know I, when I was a kid, when I would walk home from school, just seeing my father's car, I would get this oh, sinking feeling in my gut. I knew this isn't good. And of course, many of you have had similar kinds of experiences. Just seeing his car, oh, it would do that to me. That's sad and it needs healing. And when you heal, it no longer matters. Where I go, God goes with me. You see? And the world doesn't always support that, doesn't always reflect that. You have to know it's the truth. The truth is always true. And only the truth is true. Your opinions don't matter. Your opinions that seeing his car has greater power over the, than your will is not true. Believing that somebody in your past has greater power than your own will is not true. Start believing in the truth of God. I am as God created me, and I will and choose to be the Christ on earth. Not because I'm hoping. I am. But I need help to remember that. And I call on the mother to birth on that in me every day. You see? So it's really, really beautiful. It's really a beautiful process if we think about it. Uh, um, where is the kingdom of God? It's in our hearts and souls. When I'm acting and reacting from the past and hurt and pain, I'm not in my heart and soul. I'm somewhere else in my humanness. Is that bad? No, it's, I'm just hurting and I need some help. But as I get this and the more I get this, it starts changing who I am. That's called being born again. 
I'm not my past. I'm feeling renewal and something new is happening in me. And it feels just like, oh my God, you know, um, it's like I, I feel love where I only felt anxiety before. I feel peace where I felt anxiety before. You know, you start to feel a shift. And um, it's an interesting process. I'm going to start closing now, but it's an interesting process because um, one of you asked about trust the process. This is a process you have to trust that there is but God. The rest isn't where it's a fight against God and the world. It's no, actually, it's just God. And then my opinions, my wounds are in the way. The process we're trusting is not really a blind trust. It's developing an inner knowing. And knowing is different than hoping. And I, myself, you know, again, to, to Christians, I would, I love Christians. I love Buddha. I love them all. But I also see how much hurt and hate and fear that exists in even in religions. Which is sad to me. But I would say... The Christians have to be very careful because they're using that frequency, that name, Christ. And when you use a name and a frequency, you're asked by the universe to live up to it. And if you don't, you pay the price. So careful not to claim to have that Christ presence because you'll be held to accountable to that vibe, that frequency, just by karma and energy and all that. So our brothers and sisters of that nature, I, I would love to see them sit down and say, you know what? Just because our church wears blue and yours wears yellow, I, we were wrong to think ours was better. We're all talking about Christ. Let's become a universal church. And I'm not saying that's even the highest. Spiritual experience and knowingness is the highest. But at least if they're going to be an organized thing, at least get together, join together. And then who knows, if you start to forgive each other, don't be talking to me about other religions that you think are the devil. You don't even like each other. Hatred is the devil. And you hate them. You're the devil then. So heal with each other. And if you could pull that off, which they're not going to do anytime soon, and I'm not being pessimistic. I'm telling you prophetically, it's part of where we're going in this world. The hatred has to blow up. It has to get so extreme that it blows up so that people say, never again do we want the earth to be ruled by hatred. But if they could pull it together, there would be enough love that, who knows, chances are they would start loving and accepting even other religions, not just their versions of their religion. That's the destiny for everybody. It's all just silly. Getting, we've got to get over ourselves. So that's why some people walk in and go, oh, you guys embrace all kinds of, Kuan Yin, NG, oh, wow. You, yes, we do but not the way that some of the New Thought churches do. They'll announce on Sundays, we are a New Thought church that embraces all traditions. No, you don't. And we embrace all lifestyles until you see two men making out in the foyer or two women embracing each other. Oh, then oh, there's, where's your, we accept all lifestyles. You don't. You're just hoping. You're telling people that so it feels good. But do you really? And in closing, I do this, like, I can speak in any building, in any to any person, from any kind of background, because love of people channels in me God to them. If I don't love you, it's all hypocritical, and it wouldn't work. But yes, I go to churches of different kinds. I can talk to atheists, agnostics, doesn't matter to me. We can talk about life and God and love and or not. Use other terminology. Doesn't matter. Because bridging, people feeling plugged in soul to soul is what matters. That will open them up. They could be atheistic. Doesn't matter. When you touch their heart and soul, something is born in them. And you do not have to use the names that scare them or upset them. But sometimes even your style. I, I, I've spoken at Tantra conferences and spiritual group, new thought groups. New, I had new thought groups, churches. Tell me, could you not use the word God so much? Because we believe we are God. And then I say, no. <laughs> and then I say, I will not be back to this center again. It's only been a couple of them. I won't name where they are. Northern California, one of them. But I, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who I channeled there that gave out that information. Um, but 
but I didn't say the town. So, <laughs> no. um, but can you imagine a, a church don't mention God? Like, what is wrong with you? And yes, and I've taught it at Tantra conferences and, and talk about what women have gone through, you know? And there's all these people going, we're just so tantric. We, we, just, we just stand here and energetically feel each other's presence and hello, beloved, you know? And I'm like, you know. And, and, I, and I have to share and talk in these groups. And I, I believe in real spiritual. I believe in real tantra. I believe in the real of all these things. But when I see the, the, the fake versions, you know, I, I throw in, you know, a word here and there to help. Um, you know, and so it's like, just speaking from the heart, you know, do you know the hurt that, that especially women, but men too, that women are carrying by, by the weird abuses and behaviors? And it's usually men teachers. It's the men who were telling the woman at the well with Jesus, you have to come into the temple, but women aren't allowed. So how do they find God? She's going, I want to know God, but I'm not allowed in the temple. Right? It's like, wow. So she's feeling if the church claims to be God and I'm not allowed in, I can't know God. She's being lied to by them, by the, this industry, this business called church, religion. And she's being lied to. Well, it's the same in the tantric community. The majority male teachers telling the gals how they're supposed to be. So the gals are bargaining their bodies away and it's actually abuse and then it layers in more trauma. So I show up, you know, and I talk about you don't have to be naked to experience trauma, uh, tantra. You don't have to do that. You can just, in here, consciousness, love, acceptance. You know, like there's other ways. You know what happens? The women are like, oh my God. I knew that on some level. The men are like, we don't like you. <laughs> Why? Because I'm breaking the spell that they had the women under. And I'm not trying to ruin their day. To me, it's like, do whoever you want. But... Can you bring in a higher principle, a higher consciousness? You don't realize that even a hug, you can download love. I could do it from standing 20 feet away, and you can do it 20 feet away, miles away. It's in consciousness, and there's no time and space in consciousness. But full intention, man, boom, downloading love. And the last time I spoke, <laughs> funny thing, last time I was invited <laughs> to one of these, I remember I closed with a story, and I was like, how many of you believe that Jesus and Mary or whomever, how many of you believe it's possible Jesus and a woman might have ever been intimate? I'm not telling you what I believe. I'm asking them, you know, how many? And they're like, oh, totally. He would have been like so tantric, you know? And, and would, would, he have been, would he have been intimate with, oh, yes. And they would have just had glorious, you know, joining and mm, orgasmic, you know, energy fields. And I'm like, do you think he had to get her stoned to do it? And there's this silence because most of the teachers get these gals in altered states so that they can think they had a glorious experience. Well, if you're so good at it, why did you need the drugs? And they're like, dude, stop. You know, so I always just say, look, it doesn't matter if Jesus had sex or not. All I can promise you is if he did, he was good at it. Which sounds irreverent to some religious people. But my point is, where you go, God is. So bring it. It doesn't matter. Bring God with you to the toilet. Bring it with you to work. Bring it to your, with your parenting. Bring it with you. You don't exclude areas. Well, we, you know, we ohm and chant until we go in the bedroom. Then it's like fun time. You, know? you bring God wherever you go. That's living the Christ life. That's not hypocritical. And it's bringing the presence, but... If you bring the presence, it's already done. So I, I don't have to even shake your hand to say hello. It's already done, let alone make love or whatever else. But does it mean those other things are wrong? Not at all. Now it's a matter of our decision because it's quite beautiful to say, I feel so much God's presence. Would you mind if I gave you a hug? And then you're bringing that presence. And it is, wow, it, it's so unfamiliar to people that it can scare, overwhelm, but just try not to. Try not to let it go to that place. We're going to close with a meditation as always. 
But remember, when you bring that presence of God, when you, when you leave here, it's not supposed to dissipate. You bring it wherever you go. And for our meditation today, we're just going to share a hug. If you don't like to be touched or affection freaks you out, it's okay. You can, you know, just move to the back of the room. I mean, you know, you're going to be safe. No, serious. You can move to the side of the back of the room because I'm going to ask everybody just to pick somebody and hug them. But some of you are going to go into, what if it's the same sex? Am I gay? <laughs> no. What I would like you to do is as follows, please. I want you to imagine you're just going to give somebody a hug. When you do, just shut up your head. Concentrate on this. The presence of God is downloading love through me to you. Now listen carefully. If I hug another man, how do I know they're not my father that I missed? Let them be whatever you need. Not, not sensually per se, but even that if that were there. It, don't judge it. Just be there. You don't realize that someone in this room lost a daughter or a son and you're holding them and you're now going to be a surrogate, a channel of that daughter or son. You understand? How much is involved? Just a hug to realize how much responsibility there is just in hugging a person. Okay? If you can bear it. It's up to you. Some music. All right. Just... Allow, and it'll only be about a one minute hug, embrace. Just download love, man. Just download love. You're going to do one thing, download for a half a minute or so, and then let go and receive for a minute or so. That's all. Simple. The hugging could be your partner, and you think, well, we've hugged before. No, I'm not asking you to hug as a partner. I'm asking you to hug as the presence of God. Download whatever comes through. See if you can manage that. They speak about Jesus kissing some of the apostles and even Magdalene at times. The word kissing meant, it, it translates literally not to kiss, sharing the same breath. So hold and share the same consciousness. You may or may not be in a holy place. That's you. I'm going to be. Would you like to share this with me? And just download it. See if you can take all that we talk about here every Sunday and just share it in a physical contact. Give and receive. Half a minute or minute of each is all you're asked. Gently stand. People online, please do this. Just hold yourself. And if you think that's incomplete, you're still not understanding what we're teaching. Wait, you guys are already going for it. <laughs> Listen to the music. Listen. Let that be a backdrop of holiness. Pick somebody to embrace. If you don't have somebody, walk into the aisle and stand there until somebody else joins you. Chaplains, if any of you are unemployed back there in the moment, please come out and help people find partners. We're going to give you just 10 or 20 seconds to find a person to hold. You don't have to hold them yet, but stand with them. Wait one moment. Wave a hand if anybody doesn't have someone up front here. Chaplains, if you can help somebody navigate. There you go. Anybody else? Looks like everybody's found someone. And again, if we missed you, please just, just embrace yourself. Now, now, quiet. Close your eyes and choose to be nowhere else, nowhere else in the universe. It doesn't matter if they're the same gender. That's your brother. That's your long lost brother you lost in war, this life or another. That's your son. You're their son. You have no idea how meaningful it is to them. Don't try to know. Just now hold, please. Everyone, an embrace. Hold and keep holding. We'll let you know. Keep holding half a minute. Download love. Imagine the presence of God comes from the heavens through your crown into your heart and out your arms. You are downloading a wave of love to that person. You could be their dad. If it's two men, you never know. You might be the dad that wasn't kind to them. So 
Let's do it. Ragupati Raghava Rajara Patita Pavana Sitaram Ragupati Raghava Rajara Patita Pavana Sitaram Sitaram just get lost in time. Just forget time. Love, love. Download the wave. Let them feel that wave. And now, switch in your mind. You're all receiving that love. Feel the wave from their heart, hands, heavens of God, downloading through your body. if you can avoid it. I went away into passion or I went away into hurt. And then you hold that person. Meet them at that place. Don't go to that place. Meet them at it so the two of you can find holiness again. Quietly giving thanks for the experience, giving thanks to our partners. can anyone share what you felt during that experience, during that meditation? Even if you felt inhibited, whatever you felt, just share, please. Yes. Yes. Wow. You felt a certain emptiness when you woke up, and it filled that. That's nice. You're welcome. Brief. Everybody brief. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. You felt a really good connection in your, there's a child next to you and you held them and it really plugged in a lot of feelings and memories. Yes, dear. Yes. Oh, I was just wondering how long it's been since I got a hug or hugged someone. You know, you get older, 
Yes. If, if children are said to thrive in affection, why would, as she just said, why would we grow older and no longer have affection? What's wrong with that picture? Wouldn't my being older also thrive more with affection? But this world, man, it just crucifies everything, makes everything so weird, yucky, triggered, and so on. Just we have to be able to find people to be able to share that love with. And you can discuss it ahead. The point is, like, you, you hug each other. You, you're in this room. You know there's no agendas and weirdness for the most part, right? But what if it was in a store? <laughs> what if it was, you know, at a cafe? There's greater risk. You know what? Just you be clear what we're doing. Can I give you a hug? You see? That I it make that clear. Sometimes what I do, if I see somebody, I'll, I'll do that. And, you know, once in a while. And... It's not easy because of a position I play, but then do I want that to control my life? When in fact I know holding a person is, is healing, okay? So you can say, do you mind if I give you a hug? And sometimes I'll say, I'm not hitting on you or anything, I'm just holding, you know? I'll say, if you have to say that, would you be willing? And some women are like, well, I don't know safe men. Find a gay man, he's safer than the ones you've been with. <laughs> I'm, and I'm serious, like, Find someone that is, or, or, but I don't know any gay men. Find a woman. Well, does that make me a lesbian? No. Just stop doing, just hug and shut up. Just try it. If you spontaneously combust, I, Michael Muirdad, will take full responsibility for your spontaneous combustion. Okay, what do you want? Who else had their hands up? Yes. Wow. Wow. Just lost his mom a few weeks ago. The woman next to him was channeling that mom's presence. Is there anything wrong? with? Is that sinful? Is that wrong? I mean, are you crazy enough to actually think to find fault with that sort of thing? It's just nuts. But people do it all the time. Yes, dear. Yes. Wow. Wow. It's all right, sweetheart. Yeah. Feeling attacked a lot and so feeling an embrace, feeling safe enough is very healing for you. And you're in the community of Sedona and you're feeling some of these folks are talking and buying into stories about you, right? Let me let me say this very let me say this very clearly. Not one person that matters is bothering you. Those are people that are in a, the wrong mind. And they have their little weirdnesses and agendas. Welcome to Sedona, by the way. <laughs> this, there's a, that, there, that goes on here. And there's such an enabling of it because everybody has such a false spirituality. A lot of people do that here. That they enable it. And if you question them, you're not spiritual. Yes. So you have to know who you are and choose to hang with people that aren't doing that. And sometimes when it's appropriate, talk to them about it and find out what's going on. And yes, offer a hug to the person. Even if they say, no, thank you, you hold your Christ center, babe. You hold it. Anybody that matters loves you and doesn't, doesn't support that behavior. That's all, see? And you're having to shift from caring about those who don't matter only to those who matter. Anyone else? Yes, dear. I felt seen. You felt seen? Beyond the eyes. Beyond the eyes. Good. Good. So cool. Anyone else? All right. Yes, one more. Yes. Yes. 
Oh my God. Yes. Oh, nice. You got to experience that with your son? Oh, beautiful. Congrats to both of you. That's so beautiful. It's love and it's healing. It's, this is the real stuff. And I love that. But again, the world, that's not necessarily the mind of the world. I can't picture, even, even if I were still me as I am today, going back in time as I am today, being in high school and, you know, at a party. Do you mind if I download some Christ energy? <laughs> you're just going to, your guy friends, you're on the you're soccer football field. I know the play just ended and you scored a touchdown. Can I give you a, a hug and just, it, you know, this world you just go, wow, you, you know, you, you have problems. You need, you need to see somebody for this. And yet it's all holy. Well, you have to play the game and respect the illusion. But I, I love when we give and receive permission to do that because that's our real selves. And it's sad that we can't do it more often, but I understand that because some people misuse that sort of thing. But oh my God, to, to be able to embrace and just, oh, and download that. You know, I mean, uh, touching foreheads and just, which I call a tantric kiss, forehead to forehead. Doesn't mean you, you're judging or can't do physical engaging with a partner or lover. That's not the point. It's that do this first and always. Then whatever else you do changes. And how often you do it and how you, it, it changes because this is what matters, that I love you. And Jesus said to the woman at the well, I love you. And she's saying, I'm confused. Am I supposed to become your lover? I'm feeling love. I know you do. And that's okay, because I do love you. And, you know, she's like, how do I translate this? I've never heard of this. I've never seen. And imagine Jesus just going, you go ahead, go through your head trips. When, you're st when they're starting to come down, I'll give you another dose. I love you. <laughs> you know, and then he waits, calms down. I love you. <laughs> you know, and he just takes you through who knows, half dozen downloads of that, doses of that. It's freaking people out. To be on the cross and look at the crucifiers, his executioners, and say, I love you. You know not what you do. Do you know some of them were converted instantly? Because... How can you do Gandhi himself, just he's not the Christ, he's not the Buddha, he, he's a wise individual. But to be able to say Om Shanti the, to the guy that shot him, as he's falling to the ground, he's blessing him with peace. I want to be that when I grow up. That's all that matters. If you can't do that, you've missed something. To be able to hold consciousness to make love, to hold consciousness while you parent, to hold consciousness when you go to work. I know it's not always easy. But it won't be any easier to do it your way that you've tried. Do it the way where you say, God, I don't know how. You show me. And you'll start to find miracles happening at work and wherever you go. Thank you for your patience and hanging out a little bit longer for that exercise. We're going to do our closing prayer. First, our uh, love offerings, if you'd be so kind. Let me share with you. Um, the love offerings go in the purple bags when you're here. There's a line button online to click on you can make donations guys be as generous as you can be the baskets are for any extra donations people of lesser means or special projects but i do want to let you know this fall we put in new carpet that isn't paid for yet uh, not all um we have the lighting and things we've upgraded i mean you know we would appreciate if anybody any be as generous as you can be collectively but those of you who have the extra funds to help out here are the few things we're asking for, and we rarely do this. But some of these bills, they're like we're talking a grand, three grand, five grand, even 10 grand to pay these things off. Please, as much as you have, if you're somebody with the means, please help out. What they do in traditional religions, I'm not kidding, priests and uh, rabbis and uh, um, whatever they would call, you know, different traditions have different names for them all, but ministers and so on. They typically are asked by their board to take and wine and dine people that have money and ask them, I need you to write a check. And that's, you know, that's what they do. That's a common thing. It's expected, and they're not judged because that's the way they do it. I tell our folks, I don't ever want you to tell me who gives the big checks. Not because I don't appreciate it. I don't want to even be tempted to think of you differently. 
So I hope you can understand that's how I do that. And I, so if I don't walk up to you and give you a big hug and thank you, it's nothing cold. I already thank you. I already love you. You see? But I, I don't want to see you as the check writer. We need the help, yes. But I don't want to single a person out or a few people out to be that for us. I don't want to put you in that role. I want you to just relax and be you and so on. But those who have the means, please, you know, help out. We'd like to close this year without these debts and so on. We appreciate it greatly. We had to do some electrical work, which can be expensive. And, you know, this, the fall's just been uh, quite a hit, and we'd appreciate it. And one other project, remember, we bring funds out to people of lesser means and help them as a Christmas project. We'll talk about that the next week or so, so that you can uh, help us and support us with that too. But let's get these funds taken care of, and then we'll let you know more about the Christmas projects. We do have a concert coming up Christmas Eve, the day of Christmas Eve, a couple hours after service. So head for lunch, come back, but put it on your calendar because it's going to be cool. Um, <laughs> we have um, a wonderful Christmas concert. It's going to be a couple of hours. Um, if you're wanting to, you can experience the crystal bed. We have the, the yurt here that's a healing room. You can go and experience any time, any day, the crystal bed in the lobby. Um, Valerie's out in the lobby after service, like today to sign people up if you want a session. Go and get signed up. You can do it anytime during the week. Register for a session. But it's a good idea to do them while you're here. Um, we thank you for if you're on social media. Join us. We have Facebook. Um, Friends of Michael Mir Dad, you go on there. You can be interactive like this. But you also can get into our Monday Zoom program and be live in a program with that. We also have a Daughters of Heaven Facebook group. And if you go there, you can chat and hang out. You can also then be invited to join our Daughters of Heaven once or twice a month, we have a special group there. On um, t at 10 o'clock, um, the December 24th, we have our Christmas service. Some people, you know, will you have, not Christmas Day, we have our Christmas service because Sunday is Christmas Eve day. So we're having our Christmas service that day. And then we have our concert that I already mentioned. And I think that's all the announcements for today. If I missed anything, chap uh, board members can yell and remind me. Okay, thank you. Let's do our closing prayer, or our uh, blessing prayer, okay? Just a moment of gratitude, focusing on gratitude, on love, appreciation. You just download it to others and received from others, it's kind of the same. Concentrate on downloading prayer of abundance for us all, as well as being aware of what you're grateful for. This center is one version of your presence, God. Thank you. And it's not the walls. It's the presence, the commitment, the intention, the consciousness of these people. Thank you. In person and online. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I all that I give and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you so much. It'll only take a minute for them to hand that out. We'll do our closing prayer. Does anybody have any last comments about the service, what you heard today? Not just the meditation, that too, but what you heard or learned today that might make the most difference for you. Yes, sir. Uh, nice. Good. So even if you, as you have a, a hesitation to hug, your mind can say it's all right. Let go. Yes, let go. Nice. Yes. Truth. Truth. Only truth is true. You know, right? Like, hello. Anyone else? Yes. Wow. Yeah, you were experiencing some very powerful things, one of them being the embodiment of acceptance. I mean, just think about it, like just warmth and hugs, you know, especially just a short time after we're told to stay a mile away from each other and, you know, put masks on. I mean, how is that not funny? You know, let's all wear masks. We were already wearing masks. 
You know, you just got a cloth one, but, you know, we were all ready wearing masks. And, and the world's either going to go one of two directions, more hyper the direction of separation or more in the direction of joining. And I have to decide for me which one of those I'm going to do. You have to decide for you. But it's sad when those who want to do one or the other judge and hate the other that chooses differently. Forgive them. They know not what they do. Okay? Be at peace. Please stand for our closing prayer. Be aware of the words you say when you say them. The light of God, you know, does surround us. Be aware of that. And the closing. Wherever we go, God is, I am, plugged into God. And we are, you see, really get that, really know that. Before we leave, remember, Ananda's got products and such in the foyer there. He just finished a wonderful um, um, weekend group here, cacao ceremonies, other things he was doing, concert and all that. So he's also left that presence, that some energetic here. So let's give him a round of applause for the music team. <laughs> Thank you. Blessings. Oh, magical. It's just so magical. Take this with you where you go. If you go into a challenge, you didn't fail. You were just meant to bring this into a challenge. If you get to go into some blissful afternoon, great. That's what you were meant to be doing today. No matter what, bring this with you. The light of God surrounds us. We are the, light of God. the love of God enfolds us. We are the, love of God. the power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We the of God. Wherever we go, God is, I am, we are, and so it is. Peace be with you all. Thank you.